We are live. Woo! We are live, baby. What's up, everybody? This is the shift. You should know by now. If you don't get with the program, this is the program. If the shift wasn't called the shift, I might call this the program. That might already be a name of another show. It probably is. It's a dope name, but we have the shift. We are here. Nick Earnshaw, my first question for you. To, first of all, we didn't, we didn't. Uh, I want to say uh, congratulations to Freddie Freeman. His 2000th hit. Hits not really mattering like they used to, but Freddie Freeman still getting his 2000th hit. Nick Earnshaw, why, my first question to you is, why do you play the Immaculate Grid? Because you told me to. Did I tell you to? Yeah, you were the first person to tell me about it. You were the first person to tell me about it. So I've been on, well, I guess, two days now, two days in a row. I'm liking okay. it. It's better than Wordle. Better than Wordle. Oh, it's a hundred times Wordle. better than Wordle. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, I'm all in on it. I'm all in. I'll do it every day. Um, I'll, it'll be when I wake up, it'll get the brain pumping. Uh, test my baseball knowledge. I've been testing a little bit the past couple of days. I I've been drawing some oh, yeah, blanks. Me too. I'm like, oh man, how did I not think of that? And then I look up yeah, afterwards I, and I find out I'm like, oh, I could have said this guy or that guy. But Immaculate Grid's fire. Well, there's there's still four hours left in the day, so I'm not going to spoil any of it. But the the White Sox and Yankees one, I had a lot of trouble with, and I barely got it from a player that played before both of our times, I believe. Okay. Um, well, we can talk about that off off air. Um, but if you don't know about Immaculate Grid, um, and you're a baseball fan, and I assume you're a baseball fan since you watch you're watching this or listening to the show right now, uh, it's basically a game that's sort of, kind of, in a way, similar to Wordle. Uh, you have three categories uh, side to side. You have the, the top side where it's th- three categories. And then on the uh, the left side, there's three categories. And you got to match up uh, the two gat- categories together, uh, almost like a sort of bingo type of format. Um, it could be like uh, a player that had 30 stolen bases uh, on the top, along with a player that played for the Reds. You go there, you get like a Barry Larkin or something, something like that. It's, uh, it's really fun. And you get nine guesses. Go ahead, Nick. You mentioned Reds and stolen bases as your example. I, I think a guy we're going to talk about later in the show, <laughs> that he's going to be able to, if that happens on, on, on the Magla grid, I think you're going to be able to put his name eventually. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's going to surpass that. He's on, he's on that you know, it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned that. He's on pace for like uh, 80 stolen bases over 162 games. It's insane. Uh, you know who we're talking about. We're going to get to him. Um but yeah, to Macula Grid, uh, thank God for that because like I liked Wordle. I stopped playing it like a year ago probably, um, and because it got a little boring. But this is more of I'm sure your speed, my speed, probably our listeners and viewers' speed. Um, so I'm really this is this is really fun. Um, so I'm shout out to whoever created Immaculate Grid. I actually saw um, John Boy. They were like the first ones to post something, or at least for me to see. Uh, on social media so shout out to them too i didn't know what it was i don't know if they made that up um but shout out to them um so nick i want to i want to start here um and i'll I'll let you go first because i have some uh i have some fun numbers on this guy um and we'll i originally the the talk has been with Luis Arias. what he's done obviously 399 average right now just hovering right around 400 at this point in the year it's insane um i wanted to talk about the MVP stuff because the debate has been, I think, I don't know if MLB put it out there, who put it out there that if he finishes the season with a 400 average, like should he be automatic MVP? We can have that debate in a couple of weeks when I wanted to do mid season uh, awards uh, at the all-star break. I think that would be fun to do uh, as we talk about the all-star game as well. Um, that coming up um, and the home run derby and all those festivities. Um, but for right now, I think before we get to that point, um, when we debate the MVP and all that stuff, uh, I want to I want to hear your opinion first because I have some fun numbers on him. Um, I did some some uh, some digging on Baseball Reference. Shout out to Stathead if you're um, if you you know if you use their site and use Stathead a lot, they're really good. Um, but I want to hear your your side first. I know you're you're uh, intrigued like all of us. I know we had our batting average debate uh, last week, but I didn't come here uh, with that energy today because I think we can both appreciate um, and every baseball fan. Uh, whether you're, you know, newer metrics or just traditional, um, Nick, what he's doing right now is just incredible. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you haven't seen this in a very long time. Um, you know, nobody's hit for 400 <laughs> has added a batting, batting average, uh, at 400 since Ted Williams, uh, in 1941. It's, it's a long, long time ago. It's 
before my times, before your time, it's before our parents' time, and even maybe some of our grandparents' time, Francisco. I mean, that's how long it's been since this has been done at towards the end of the season. Now, he's got a long way to go, right? Rise, he's, he's got a ton of time sure. left, a lot of baseball left. His average can come down, but, you know, he's a guy who's, who's hit for average his entire career in the minor leagues, in the major leagues, his, his couple of years he's been in, in the majors. Yeah, I listen, this is somebody who who hits really well and hits consistently. That that's what batting average shows if you're going to hit consistently and he makes contact at an incredible rate. And I was reading a piece on uh, on him today um, by Tom Verducci in Sports Illustrated. Let me tell you, I, I got a couple of stats for you which make this even more impressive of what he's doing this year, Francisco. So, Arias. Now, this is crazy because players who swing at pitches out of the zone, they're batting, I believe, under 200. Arias is hitting 367 on pitches out of the zone. That's an incredible stat to me. Like, he's almost hitting 400 on balls, not even strikes. Like, he just makes co- a good contact with the baseball. You, ju- you just got to give him credit there. Very interesting stat Tom Rich put out. Another one, he's also hitting 441 with runners in scoring position. Incredible. That means he's hitting and coming up clutch in big moments as well. He's just not Even getting better empty in more base clutch hits. moments. Yeah. yeah. Like he like he's not coming up with just empty base hits. And, oh, he's leaning off the inning, base hit, he doesn't come around to score or something, or nobody's on, right? He's hitting great with runners in scoring position. So I, I gotta give him a lot of credit. He's doing it at all facets. And you know, when we have that discussion later. Yeah, maybe you do have to consider him in the MVP discussion because of some of the other metrics that are are just astounding that go along with the batting average. The batting average is great. He's hitting close to 400. means he's hitting consistent all of the time. Um, But there's other metrics as well, not just the batting average, that can make his case. And um, if he keeps it up, man, I I think he's got to be considered, right? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like, and even outside of, the batting average like i mean ops one of the uh you know more important statistics and in baseball at least uh we look at nowadays that um you know corresponds to you know winning baseball games when it comes to offense like he's leading national league in ops plus which is you know the the plus just to you know uh you know the park the park factors and the error that he's you know uh, playing in right now um so like it's it's the average. It's the on base percentage. Um, I mean, and just what he's doing, you know, hitting, getting on base. That's already enough. I mean, he's slugging four ninety three. Like whatever. He doesn't. I mean, if he if, if he was a power hitter uh, at this, I mean, probably we'd probably have to sacrifice uh, some of that average. Um, but it, it's just it's unbelievable what he's uh, done to this point, and he's been a huge. By the way, been a huge reason, obviously, to why the Marlins. Um, have been, a, let's be honest, they've been a surprise at this point. Like, Yuri Perez, too, has been unreal. 134 ERA since he's come up. We haven't even talked about him. Uh, maybe, you know, g- give it a few more weeks. He, he keeps us up. We're gonna, definitely going to be talking about him. Um, but, and even, I mean, Sandy Alcantara is not having a good year. So, I mean, it's weird, right? Sandy Alcantara, Cy Young last year. Not, I mean, I'm getting off track here uh, with the Arias thing. But just think about the, you know, the Marlins, what they've done. Um Nick, what what I want to mention here though is, um, and I had texted this to you. I wanted to find, um, you know, the last time someone through seventy games uh, had, you know, I guess hovered. I mean, I did three ninety nine average or more. Um, and the last time someone, at least this is according to Stathead, um, and the criteria I used was uh, better than a three ninety nine average over um, the course of seventy games, just any seventy game stretch. The last one. Uh, Josh Hamilton in his prime 2010, uh, the span was from June 4th, 2010 to August 25th. Uh, he hit 404 in just over 300 plate appearances arises just around 400 plate appearance or 400, uh, 300 plate appearances. And then all the other ones before that, right before 2010, we go back seven years. Um, and it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I, I guess this is that, that, that same span. Um, just a 70 game span for Barry Bonds in 2003 from uh, May 5th or May. Uh, what was that? 
Um, okay, but this is from 2003 to 2004. So over that, okay, it's not one season, but um, that even says more about Luis Arias, right? He's doing this in one season. Um, Barry Bonds from uh, July 19, 2003 to May 1st, 2004, 400 batting average. I mean, there's like a bunch of more spans here that Bonds did uh, in from 03 to 04. And that's what just what he was doing back then because he was, uh, you know, when he wasn't getting, I mean, he was a machine. Um, so it was Bonds, it was our pools in 2003, uh, from, you know, April to, you know, late, late June hit 407. Um, but the point here is and you go to Bonds and before that Manny Ramirez in 2000, um, maybe Todd Helton in 1999. That's all I'm going to go back there. Um, but the point is that like Arias is doing something that not a lot of guys do. Like I'm mentioning names like Josh Hamilton, who but people forget about, you know, and unfortunately Josh Hamilton had, you know, some, uh, you know, stuff with drugs and stuff like that, which was unfortunate. But when it is prime, he was incredible. He's one of the best. He was one of the best hitters. Barry Bonds. I, enough said. I don't need to say anything. Albert Pujols. Don't need to say anything. Manny Ramirez. Don't need to say anything. Todd Helton. Underrated. Could be a Hall of Famer. Don't need to say anything. Larry Walker. Hall of Famer. Don't need to say anything. Frank Thomas. I'm going back to 1997. Uh, these are guys that, again, had a, at least a 399 average in 70 game span. Like Arias is doing in 2023, man. Like guys don't do this. Guys don't do this. Like we, again, I didn't want to come here and talk about batting average doesn't matter, but like the, you know, like, no, seriously, like I know you're laughing, but like, I know. you know, the way that the landscape of baseball is nowadays, the fact that people aren't taking batting average seriously is making this that much more incredible that he's hitting 399. Nick, he literally doesn't need to, he could fall off and hit 350. It doesn't matter what he's done to this point in the season. He's already, uh, you know, and I don't think he's going to fall off like that. I think he, I, I don't think, I think we could probably both agree. He's not going to hit 400 this year. Still really hard to do. It'd be awesome if he does. Um, but just to wrap up here, Nick, I think to do what he's already done to this point uh, is the point I'm trying to make here. Is that again, names, Hamilton, Bonds, Pujols, Walker, Helton, like, it's been incredible. So, um, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, and, and just to kind of kind of wrap up on Arias, like you also have to remember, batting average has been down, like as the median across the league, right? Like it, it's been down over the past couple of years. It's it's been a tough environment for hitters, right? Like the pitching's been so phenomenal. I believe, you know, you're still hanging around 250, a little under 250 right now. Um, you know, is the batting average across Major League Baseball. He's doing it in an environment where pitching is unheard of, right? Like they're not l allowing a ton of hits. Um, the batting average across the league is down uh, as a whole. So in the environment of, uh, of strikeouts being up and and batting average as, as a whole being down, the fact he's doing this at this point in time okay. is even crazier. So just to kind of echo your point, yes, in this era of really good pitching, a lot of swings and misses, a lot of strikeouts, um, it, it's it's truly incredible that he's hitting at such a consistent rate and on pitches out of the zone on pitches yeah, out of the unreal. zone. He's yeah. like, what, what is he? A 367 out of the zone as of it's today. like you put it anywhere near the zone. It almost is like Barry Bonds, right? I'm not saying Luis Arias is Barry Bonds, <laughs> but like you put anything near the zone for Barry Bonds. That's why he got intentionally walked so often because it was like, you don't want to put yeah. it anywhere near the zone because he's going to clobber it. So I, I, almost kind it, of the same thing yeah. with Arias. And listen, this is nothing new with Arias. As I mentioned before, like he was in Minnesota, 334 in 2019 and 92 games. 30 and only 32 games are in 2020, 321. 2021, though, 294, 316 last year. And now this year he's batting 399, right around that 400 mark. So he, listen, he is doing something incredible. He's always been a consistent hitter at the plate a great contact hitter and this year he's just taken it to new heights and if he can sustain it I, I mean how can you not enter him into that conversation for an award at the end of the year so we'll 100%. see how it goes we'll, we'll talk about it I mean there are there are other players in the conversation we we'll get into it you know the Corbin Carroll's of the world the, the Ronald Acuna juniors um but that I mean Araya is like there's an argument for him um I know I was doing my bull crap on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, me, Nick, uh, shout out to our, our guy, our coworker, Sean Bell, um, the great, uh, you know, Sean Bell. He also kind of got in there. Um, you know, I, I, but we have our fun, uh, but in all seriousness, arise, 
uh, unbelievable what he's done to this point. Um, and his name is definitely in the conversation right now. Um, I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen the rest of this year, man. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, track record says maybe he does it, but also track record of Major League Baseball, um, where it's at right now, maybe probably in it isn't in his favor. But to this point, what he's done, it, it, you know, his odds haven't been in his favor. So, you know, you got guys like Cal Schwarber and Max Muncy um, who are kind of changing the game a little, whether you like it or not. Let's be real, hitting under 200 for still proving they're that valuable hitters. Um, so, again, incredible what they're doing. Uh, Nick, um, I did just have uh breakfast for dinner i had eggs oh. i had uh i had swirl bread you like swirl bread by the way um it's okay it's not not my first choice of bread i'm you know i go rye bread white bread Ugh. what italian bread oh my um, I, italian bread's good i actually had italian bread tonight I had, I had some pasta disgusting. you had, pumpernickel uh, guy i do like pumpernickel yeah Ugh, oh my god what is wrong with you yeah yeah, um, Disgusting. big pumpernickel guy. Um, but I did have pasta tonight. I had some spaghetti, some meatballs. Nice. So Italian I had, man. I had, I didn't have, I didn't have the potatoes, but I had some meat today. Potatoes. <laughs> meat. Well, you're about I to have your meatballs. potatoes. You're about to have your potatoes. Nick, get your plate, get your, uh, get your fork, get your, get your napkin. Because I definitely know you're, you know, you, you need your napkin just in case. Uh, I, got my I water can't wear here. white. I can't wear white when having pasta. It's as you, a big yeah, no-no for great. me. Yeah, big no-no. I, I, I get it every learned. single time. Every single time. You can ask any family member of mine. I get the pasta sauce on the white shirt. It's no doubt about it's it. Hard. Every time. We're going downstairs. We're going shirtless at the table because it's a big nightmare. <laughs> so, I <laughs> just no no po- no white shirts and pasta for me at the table because it becomes an right. oxy-clean um, de- debacle, I guess you could say. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there, but yeah, that's okay. I'll allow. <laughs> um, all right, Nick, let's 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 get to it. Um, I mean, another guy. I love that we're talking about these young players. I know Arise isn't as young, but Ellie De La Cruz. Last time we talked about this guy, I believe we were recapping like the first couple of games uh, that he uh, played in. Um, and my gosh, uh, he's been unbelievable. Uh, hit for the cycle. Uh, I mean, what what can't this guy do? I mean, ever since this guy got called up, you know, the Reds win t- 12 straight games. Yes, they did lose two of three to Atlanta. Atlanta's one of the best teams in baseball. So what's that? What's that to be really, like, super crazy upset about there? I believe they're still, you know, first in the NL Central. So, I mean, I don't um, – they're firmly there in a, in a wild card spot as well. Um, so, yeah, man. I mean, Ellie De La Cruz, uh, I, I mean, this guy's a unicorn. Um and it's really exciting, Nick, because I think he's going to be right there with, uh, um, you know, the, the the Latino players that are kind of taking charge, um, you know, in MLB. Him and Vladdy and Soto and Acuna um, and Tatis, who has been unbelievable, actually been unbelievable in the field this year. It's a good comeback. Um, I mean, one thing I kind of want to ask here is like, you know, I, I mean, obviously the first time we talked about him, we were just reveling at what, what, what you know, what a, a unicorn this guy is. But let's, I know it's early. People are going to say, oh, well, well, no, we're going to talk about what the frick his ceiling is. Okay. This kid <laughs> is unbelievable. He's young. He's, uh, you know, again, he is 21 years old. He's exciting. He's 6'5. He is, he has that, you know, that personality uh, of the kind of new age of, I believe he's Dominican, right? He's Dominican. So, you know, kind of has that Dominican swagger that they, I love that Dominican swagger, the pimp and bombs, real home run celebrations. You know what I'm talking about? Not these fraud uh, King Neptune celebrations by the Mariners and the whatever. Okay. Don't get me upset here, Nick. Okay. I know you're not saying anything. I know you're not. You're already getting me upset. You're already getting me upset. But anyway, Ellie De La Cruz, Nick, I'll start here. I think the the player that ca- kind of first comes to mind because I was looking at uh, on Baseball Reference they you know they had their your the stats but then under your stats they have like your 162 game average again small sample size but let's have some fun okay people I like to have fun Nick Earnshaw likes to have fun this is what we like to do okay so whatever small sample size but Ellie De La Cruz is fun. I'm excited about the future of baseball with this kid, especially Cincinnati rides with Matt McClain too and Hunter Green. 
Let's get excited. But his 162 game average, Nick. Okay. For this year, if you're looking at his small sample size in 17 games, three homers, 333 average, 295 on base, 158 OPS plus. He's on pace, just hypothetically. 172 runs scored over 162 games. 219 hits, 48 doubles, 19 triples, 29 homers, 76 stolen bases. Okay. He, he would strike out 200 times, but who cares? Strikeouts, whatever. The, the value of this guy is amazing. It doesn't matter. It's not, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. Wearing full. Uh, and so 333 average, 395 on base. I, I said with the 594 slugging, uh, 989 OPS. Okay. 391 total bases, what he would be on play for, on pace for. A 6.7 B war, which is superstar esque. This guy is on pace, or not on pace, but like, if the projection we're looking at here, his ceiling is going to be, I mean, it, someone like, uh, you know, who's making a comeback this year, Nick, and maybe who knows what his ceiling is. Maybe we're looking at it this year. Ronald Acuna Jr. Different mm-hmm. type of build, but same type of skill set, right? Fast hits for power, you know, extra base hits. Um, you know, I don't, Nick, maybe you can tell me what he does in the field a little more. Um, Acuna has that disgusting arm out there in right field. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I believe from looking at his prospect page that Ellie's supposed to be an above average defender, but you could tell me. Um, but regardless, like this guy's ceiling from what I told you with his 162 game average and the comparison to Acuna, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong there. That's the first guy that came to mind. We're looking at the numbers, maybe not the same build. But that's who he kind of reminds me of here um, with a possible ceiling. Nick, what is your ceiling, though? Because I know, again, you're a big prospect guy. How do you see Ellie De La Cruz and what his potential is in Major League Baseball? So first things first, before I, I give you like my comps and who, what his ceiling is, can Major League Baseball for once, just for once, market their players correctly? You have a superstar who is electric. Capitalize on it. Just capitalize on it if you're Major League Baseball. We know they've had problems marketing their players in the past. This guy is a, a – you can market him with ease. You don't even have to do anything, and you can market him. So that, I'm just putting that out there. Um, that, that's how much well, we're definitely gonna, we'll definitely do an – we can do an episode on marketing because I think oh, we, we would will. have a good conversation there because, like – Oh, we will. I mean – I don't know, man. Like the the again, we could go off on this probably for this could be a whole right. other topic. But like, I don't. Again, we'll 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 talk about that. But you know, I mean, I, I feel like I've seen a bunch of Ellie Dale Cruz on social media. But that's go a ahead. good thing. About time, right? Right, about time. Yeah. So, sure. uh, that, that's how that's how good this guy is. I mean, he is a walking human highlight. Uh, is Ellie De La Cruz? Uh, hit for the cycle the other night. Now, before I get into mine. Do you know one of his teammates made an interesting comparison uh, and uh, to a Hall of Famer where he thinks his ceiling is? Do you, do you know who that is, Francisco? Um, a Hall of Famer? Wait, wait, wait. It's a Hall teammate. Famer. His teammate made a comparison. I to saw a this. I'm, I'm, I, give, me, like, give me a second. I, I want I, I to guess this. Give me, like two, give me like two guesses, and then I'll, right. I'll let you. All right. Who do you – all right. Do you want me to tell you what player – who who's the one who comped him? His teammate. Which teammate? No, 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 no. I, that's what I'm saying. I want to guess who. You want to guess what, which like, who, Yeah. Um. I I, I saw it somewhere. I, I it was a couple of days <laughs> ago, and I can't. It was either. It was either. Was it Vado? It was Vado. Okay. If it was Vado, and it was. Um. Damn it! I, I saw it too. And I'm really pissed <laughs> off about. Give me. All right. Give me one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess. I'll take a guess of this. And then, um. Did I mention his name before when we were talking you did about? Not. Rise? You. You did not. I did not. Okay. Can you give me a hint? Uh. Without hmm. giving it away. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to give it away. Um. His first and last. The first initial of his first and last name are the same. <laughs> no, no, no. Can you, all right can you at least give me the time period he played um what was he 50s was he 50s mickey mantle yes 
Is yeah, you know it. why? Because I, I saw I was listening to yes. talking baseball and Trevor Plouffe was talking about that. He mentioned yes. Mickey Mantle. So that's once you once I M M. <laughs> all right, so I, I kind of gave it away, but oh, that was that was good heads. All right, but yes. go ahead, Mickey Mantle's. I mean, that's a pretty good comparison. A, that's a really really high. That's high praise for, from Joey Votto, who himself um, could see himself in Cooperstown, maybe one day, maybe one day. But I, I mean, listen, if he's if he's getting comp to Mickey Mantle, I mean, the ceiling, it, it's sky's the limit for Ellie De La Cruz, right? Um, coming yeah. out, he's you know, scouts they compared him. To, I mean, to to these type of players, right? I mean, Ken Griffey's been compared to Bonds, Rodriguez, Alex Rodriguez. He's also been comp to Tatis because of the height, kind of the speed and yeah. athleticism. So I can see the Griffey. Yeah, so I, I, I see some of these comparisons that scouts made of him coming out. And for Ellie De La Cruz, I, I think that he's going to be his own entity, in, in my opinion, because he's kind of the new age ball player, strong arm, really tall, fast, can hit for power, can hit for contact. I don't, I, I think some of those comps the scouts made um, were, 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 are, are kind of all uh, spot on a little bit, right? I think they're, they're pretty close to what he could be and what his ceiling could be, but I think he's just going to be his own entity. I, I don't think he's going to be like this guy or like that guy. I think Ellie De La Cruz is going to be his own entity. And we're going to be talking about him to another player in 20 years. We're going to comp him to Ellie De La Cruz. That's what I think is going to happen. That's how I special, hope. that's how special I think baseball. this kid is. He came from nothing, came from the Dominican Republic, didn't have a lot of money. In 2020, during the pandemic, when the Reds, they, um, I believe they they got rid of a couple minor league teams, he thought he wasn't even going to make the team. This guy has faced adversity time and time again, and he's just gotten. And he's a workhorse. He works hard at his craft, and you know he plays. He's got a great attitude on his shoulders. I, I, I think the sky's the limit for Ellie De La Cruz. Barring any significant injury, I don't see him not working hard. I don't see him playing well in this era, especially at his height, his athleticism, his arm strength, all of the above. Um, and we're only, what, 15 or so games in, 16, 17, whatever it is, um, mm-hmm. into his career. I think at 21 years old, I, he's not even going to reach his peak just yet. I think we got a while until we see kind of the superstar to really start to blossom. I, he's got all the tools in my book. I think he's going to be a five-tool player. And, you know, Votto comparing him to Mantle, well, I don't see why he can't get there. I, I, I really don't. That That's how good he is with it, with all the athleticism, all the attributes. I, I think the sky's the limit at this point. Yeah, and I like what you said there about, um, you know, Ellie potentially, you know, doing the comp thing is that people will be comparing, you know, players in the future to him. And I think baseball could use that because, like, let's be real, like, and people compare Mike Trout to Mickey Mantle, but like, you know, Trout, Trout's a little tough. He doesn't really have too much of a personality. Um, you know, I know that does not, that's not everything, but it's not like he has, and, and don't get me wrong, like Trout's incredible to watch. I love him. But like, you know, people, I feel like every time we talk about Trout, it's like Mickey Mantle. Like we talk about Ellie like Cruz here. And I'm like, okay, like it's great, but, um, you know, you, you want guys to be like a Vladdy Guerrero or a Griffey or a, or uh, um, Frank Thomas guys that were like, again, you know, they're their own entities you're talking about, um, you know, more geared towards it. So I, I think that's, that's really exciting. Um, so I think regardless, we can just agree that Ellie's going to be um, a incredible player for years to come. Um, you know, again, like I said before, I um, he's kind of added into that mix of the young Latino players that, uh, you know, are already at elites that I know, I know, you know, Ellie's only, you know, 15 to 20 games in, but you know, again, the Juan Soto's of the world, the, the Acuna's, the, 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 the Tatises, like these guys are exciting. And, uh, Ellie, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, maybe he gets a rookie of the year. And we're already talking about him being right there, man. Does so. he, does he take it from Corbin? Does he? I don't Damn, know. That's, that's tough. I mean, Corbin's already an MVP conversation. We'll see. Maybe Corbin's, slows down a little bit and maybe Ellie just picks it up like he has been already. We'll see. Got, we'll revisit that in like months. August. That's the yeah. problem. Corbin has a couple months yeah. on him. He started the year with the Diamondbacks. Already has what end of March, April, May, and then most of June. So he's already got a couple months on him. 
Yep. All right, let's uh let's get to the next uh the next topic here. As Philadelphia Phillies fans, wah, wah, wah. Oh, we try to keep it neutral here on the shift because this is a baseball show, but it's kind of hard. Um, I, you know, but you know what? The whole baseball world laughs at the Mets. Uh, as Gary Cohen, uh, you know, we would get in trouble for copyright here. Uh, you know, we we aren't a millionaire uh, making money podcast, so we can't put uh, Nick. I don't know if you heard Gary Cohen's call at the end of the game yesterday. And the most horrific loss of uh, the Mets all year. And, uh, you know, Buck Showalter decides not to use uh, his best relievers, which he didn't. And thankfully, we will take that Buck Showalter as the Phillies slide into third in the NL East at 40 and 37, I believe. 41 and 30, whatever. It doesn't matter. The Mets, though, <laughs> as they sit here in Major League Baseball uh... at 35 and 42, 15 games back. The number one payroll. Uh, I, I'm, I'm right there, right? Number one payroll in Major League Baseball. Ever, Frankie right? Lindor. Isn't it ever? Isn't it ever? Isn't it ever? I think probably. it's most ever. The most probably. expensive team ever, I thought. Yeah, they probably. <laughs> you're probably right there. You know, Justin Verlander uh, making gazillion dollars a year. Scherzer, same. Lindor, same. Um you know, they they lose somebody like Edwin Diaz. You lose somebody like Jose Quintana. But you figured, oh, we still have Verlander. Oh, we still have Scherzer. Oh, we still have Jeff McNeil. Oh, wait, I have an 88 OPS plus and I am not productive. Oh, Starling Marte, not as productive. Uh, Pete Alonzo did miss a few weeks, but he's back. Um, The Mets, Nick, I think, I, I'm going to ask you first, like, What's I mean, 35 and 42, not in the same spot they were last year on pace there. They won 100 games last year, did lose, you know, in the playoffs. But again, we're at least, you know, had a good regular season that counts for something. But this year, they're looking like the Mets of old. So, I Nick, it. you I, I know it. you love it. I know. I it. But uh, you know, my prediction came true again. Oh, you did. You're right. Yeah. I, yeah. We, we did have to bring this up. Yeah. The Mets. Yeah. Well, all right. So like, let's be real. Like as they sit here with their, their worst loss, let's be real. That eighth inning that they gave it to the Phillies. I can say it as a Phillies fan. They gave it to us. Like, thank you. We appreciate that. We'll take the series win. I mean, they gave us a series. Um, we'll take the wins where we can get them. How do you feel? How are you feeling about the, the Mets, Nick? Are, are they, is this who they are or, do you think they'll get it together? They'll get hot and they'll make get it to 90, 95 wins. I don't see them getting together at all. I don't see them getting to 90 plus wins right now in, in the standings. Not too great. Uh, 15 games out of first place. No shot. Um, I, I think I picked them to be third. They're actually fourth right now. I think the Phillies are better than them. Atlanta is better than them. The Marlins have played much better than them. And injuries have been a problem. Justin Verlander's been hurt. Old age. Max Scherzer has been in and out of the lineup. He's hurt, suspended, not pitching well, whatever. Um, Kodai Senga, he's been okay. He's been okay. Back into the rotation, not great. Edwin Diaz being out. Bullpen has been shaky at best. He was kind of that glue guy at the back end of the bullpen, and they can't seem to figure it out. And Buck doesn't know when to use guys correctly. So we that's saw that. another problem. We saw that in the worst loss of their season against the Phillies. Um, this past Sunday. So yeah, I don't see this team turning it around. I really don't. Um, I, I think they have a lot of ego on this team, a lot of players that aren't living up to their expectations. And I, I just, I, I think this is going to be a lost season for the Mets. I think they spent a lot of money um, on older players and this is what happens. And, you know, you're, you're missing some of your top pitching, pitching, um, Top guys in, uh, in your pitching rotation, and like Verlander, like Scherzer. I mean, it's been it's a mix and match kind of with those guys. You don't know what you're gonna get. Guys have been hurt. So all in all, that uh, this Mets team, I <laughs> I'd be worried if I were New York. They could turn into sellers at the deadline. That that that's just where they're at right now. Um, because if they don't turn around quickly, they might have to move off a couple of contracts or something and send some guys send some guys to a contender. I don't know if they give up like that because I don't know if that's the Mets' way, but I don't see them turning around. I really wow. don't. And how much longer is Buck going to be there? I don't know. I, I don't know. know. It's a big nightmare in New York. 
if you're the Mets. An absolute yeah. nightmare because you are so far out. And I, I just want to bring up the wild card standings right now. How many games out of wild card are they as of right now after that loss to, to the Phillies? They are eight games out of the third wild card spot. It's Jesus brutal. Christ. I know yeah. it's June. I know it's the June, but it's the end of June. We're starting in the dog days of summer. I don't see it getting better for the Mets. Yeah, I, you know, man, like, <laughs> excuse me. This is like kind of, and I know this is just like, okay, you're 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 saying this because it's the Mets, but truly, I can see this because of the talent on this team. This is this is my this is my take here. There's a lot of talent on this team. I do think they're going to quote unquote. Not put it together, but they'll get hot at some point because they have so much talent on their roster, even without the Edwin Diaz's of the world, even without the Jose Quintana, who's actually going to come back soon. So they'll get a little help there um, in the rotation. But still, I believe it comes down to Verlander and Scherzer, um, which I have stated on the show uh, in the past. Um, So, like, what I'm saying is, though, is, like, you got guys like Verlander Scherzer. Um, you got Dave Robertson, who's been really good. Um, they're in the back end of the bullpen. You have uh, the Alonzos. You have the McNeils. You have the Lindors. You have the Martes. You have the Canas. Um, you still have, uh, you know, even a young Breck Beatty, who's showed, you know, flashes here and there. Um, and Nimmo, too. Nimmo's an on-base machine, um, who has actually been one of their better hitters this year. And Francisco Alvarez, too, which is, you know, proven to be one of the better uh, younger um, you know, hitters in baseball so far is very, you know, it's been pretty, pretty, pretty promising so far. I think there will be a point um, in like August or September where they will get hot, but somehow, some way, there'll be a couple of games out of a wild card spot and they'll have a chance, but it'll, it'll be too late. I think, <laughs> I think they're the, the teams that will be in the wild card. And I know we're projecting three months ahead, but this is what we do. It's baseball. It's a long season. Um, I think it's going to be teams like the Phillies. I think it's going to be teams like the Padres who have been not great, but I can see them getting it together. Um, and I think it's going to be somebody like the Dodgers um, or the, who else is in the, um, oh, so maybe, well, maybe, okay, maybe, Nah, I don't know. I still don't. I don't trust the okay, so Maybe I, I miscalculated that because Miami. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust San Fran. I, I think. I don't know if I trust Miami either. Maybe we'll see. Um, may, maybe the Mets are there. Like St. Louis. Maybe St. Louis gets hot at some point, but they've just been. I don't know. Um, because For someone's got to win that. Someone's got to win that NL West, right? Someone's got to win that NL West. Um, so it's. Uh, I think it's going to be probably going to be the Dodgers. So San Diego, Philly, ah man, maybe they're in the mix there for that last wild card spot. But you know, maybe it's Milwaukee, maybe it's the Reds. I don't know. Um, it's it's weird. The National League is weird right now. But just the way I'm feeling, I'm just going off. You know, part of this is my gut feeling. They're gonna get hot at some point, but it's not gonna be enough. Just the way this season has gone. Um, you know, the, the, the Mets franchise the last five years has been all over the place, right? They've had good years. They've had seasons where they were, you know, 10 games over 500, but missed the playoffs because the national league East is that good. Um, they had seasons like last year where they were, uh, you know, a hundred wins, uh, but they, uh, lose to, uh, who did they lose to, uh, Padres, right? Um, 101 wins last year, loses the Padres. They have 2021 where they win 77 games. Um, so, like, I just have a feeling there'll be a couple of games over 500, um, but they miss the playoffs. But there could be a world, Nick, where Verlander, Scherzer get it together because of who they are. Um, maybe they make a few moves of the deadline. I don't know who it would be. Maybe they um, get a reliever. Um, maybe doesn't matter because Buck Buckshow Walter still is their manager. There's a lot of hypotheticals here, right? There's a lot of ways, different ways you can go. But I'm going to say my gut feeling uh, here would be the Mets miss the playoffs. They finished like 82 and 80, 83 and 79. And they miss postseason. All right. That's fair. I don't think they're making the playoffs. I think they have no shot. I don't think they're going to be close. What's I the think... record? What, what do they finish with? I say they finish with around 82 wins. 
Okay, so we're we're in the same territory. 82 wins. I don't think they're going to get there. I, I think maybe they pick it up a little bit. Maybe they pick it up a little bit in July and August, um, early saying. September. But they're no they're known for collapsing at the end. They're going to collapse. I have no they're like the Cowboys. The Cowboys collapse every year in the NFL and the Mets always and the collapse. The Sixers too. Yeah, the Sixers too. They're another the Cowboys, Sixers and Mets. Three teams that you can count on collapsing at the end of the season. I just have no doubt. And I just I, I think age is catching up to Scherzer. I think age is catching up catching up to Verlander. And I think losing Edwin Diaz, the back end of that bullpen is going to really yes. hurt them. While their it's offense, huge. I think, can get them back in it maybe a little bit, it's not going to be enough. Not going to be enough. I don't think they have the pitching to do it. Um, and um, while the names are big, I don't think um, they're going to be those names that they've been in the past. It's just where I'm at with, with the Mets right now. Yeah, I think, I think we're, 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 we're mostly on the, the same page there. Um, Nick, let's, uh, before we, before we get to the, uh, the end of the show, talk to me about the futures game. You brought this up to me. Um, I just caught the, uh, some of the rosters, yeah. uh, for uh, the futures game. We can, we can go just, just kind of give me standouts. Give me, um, who, who players to watch. Um, I know you're a big prospect guy when it comes to minor leagues. Um, you know, a couple of Phillies in there. Uh, we definitely have to talk about just as Phillies fans. Um, Justin Crawford, Carl Crawford's son, Mick Abel, um, you know, uh, who I'm really excited about. Um, but give me some names. Let's start with the uh, the American League. Let's look at some of the hitters. Some names that I'm eyeing just as a, as a fan that I've seen um, in the past. Someone like Harry Ford, who's one of the catchers. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, uh, he was a big name in the World Baseball Classic. That's where I know him from. Um, <laughs> Jackson Holiday. Marcelo Meyer, the couple of names I recognize. Um, those are honestly like the three names that stick out to me. So tell me what to watch for from the American League there, at least hitting wise. Yeah. Well, I think number one, Jackson Holiday, uh, top overall prospect in baseball, number one from Baltimore Orioles, number one pick a couple of years back. He's Matt Holiday's son. Uh, he's going to be in the Futures game this year. Definitely a player to watch. Um, he, he's someone who has a lot of intrigue around him, especially because of who his dad is and because of how high of a draft pick he was, right? So a lot of expectations with Holiday. Um, he's definitely a name to watch. I think everyone's going to have their eyes on him for sure. Um, and you, you mentioned um, a, a couple of good names. I need to mention, you know, Mr. Wilmington Blue Rock, myself, called Games There, uh, worked for them for two years. Uh, James Wood, didn't get to see him play. He was still in single A, um, when he was traded over from the Padres last season in the Juan Soto deal, he went to the Nationals. And James Wood, a player to watch. Um, so is on the National like, League side, or oh, okay, so National this, League side. I moved to the National League side. Sorry about that. That's so okay. Yeah, we can we can just go all over the place. That's cool. James Wood, definitely a player to watch. He's been moved up to Double A Harrisburg now. Two seventy two average this year. Twelve home runs. Nine oh three OPS. Five thirty six slugging um definitely a player to watch if um if i'm someone interested in the futures game and guys coming up nationals they, they don't have a lot to be excited about james wood's a guy to be excited about if you are a washington nationals fan he's got a lot of pop um and i, I think he's going to be a, a player in the next couple of years you're going to start to hear his name uh, a little bit more um i'll go back to the american league marcelo meyer uh <laughs> he's a guy from the boston red sox he's their top prospect um he's played in 56 games this season batting 250 12 homers 47 rbis um he's the top prospect for the red sox to watch um been a name been floating out there for a while you mentioned him just a couple minutes ago have to watch him. He's a player I'm really, really excited about. And then just looking overall at some of the um, the the news and notes, there's going to be six out of the ten top prospects in Major League Baseball playing in this game. So you're going to see the top level talent. Top level talent's going to be here in the in the futures game. All of these top guys um, are, are going to be in it. Um, so definitely some some real exciting players there. Um, and then. For both the AL and the NL. So the AL, if eight former first round picks on this team, six on the National League side that were first round picks. So a lot of high draft picks from names you might be a little bit more familiar with than guys that kind of came out of nowhere. And then for the two two teams, they have 11 international born players representing five countries. So that I think that's a pretty cool um, stat as well. 
And um, just overall, you look at it, Harold Reynolds, he'll be managing the American League team this year. And Raul Abanez will be the National League manager. And Sick. one of our another another former Philly, Jamie Moyer. Uh, he will be one of the coaches on, on the roster as well. Jamie's gotta be like like 90 at this point, right? He's got is he in his 60s? I think he's in his 60s. Nah, nah, he's in his sec- nah, I ain't gonna disrespect Jamie like that. Uh Shout out to Jamie's. I mean, he's legend for how legend. long he pitched and legend. Be, being able to obviously uh, over here in Philadelphia, 2018. Um, but him be doing what he was able to do up until the age he was able to do it, um, you know, face like however many percentage of major league hitters all time. Like it's yeah, insane. It's I insane. forget what the, that is. It's insane. Um, Nick, give me, give me some, like, give me like, couple of pitchers so I may, maybe you mentioned some of these pitchers already um but give me like just a couple of pitchers because i'm a big pitching guy so i want to i want to know who should i watch pitching wise in this futures game there's there's a couple of of, of pitchers i think you should be watching for, for will klein uh kansas city pitcher i think he's a pitcher definitely to look for mm-hmm. in this game a little underrated but i i, kansas I like city needs klein. some some something to be yeah. excited about yeah so you know? def- definitely him I, I really like uh klein definitely just keep your eye on him in, in this lineup and then going through some of the other pitchers uh for this team um i'll go back to the national league mick abel gotta watch him uh if you're a phillies fan one of the top prospects, Mick Abel, definitely a guy. Six five. He's got really good stuff. His if he can control his his breaking pitches, I think he's going to be a really good pitcher at the major league level. Um, okay. And and then another guy um, for 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 the National League um, is JP Massey. Um, you know, this is this is another player to keep your eye on a, as well. Um, part of the Greensboro Grasshoppers. Uh, he's in what a terrible high a. Yeah, I, I called some of their games before. The grasshoppers. So, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah so. I know. I know. I, the Greensboro, they got some they got some interesting, uh interesting names. Oh, and then Owen White on the American League side. Uh, another okay. another pitcher for the Texas Rangers organization to watch out for. Oh dope, dope, dope. So the the twenty fourth edition uh, of this game, um, showing the, the baseball's greatest prospects, uh, the future of the game. Uh, it will be Saturday, July eighth, seven Eastern time. Locked in. Um, Seattle's T-Mobile Park. So that's exciting. Beautiful ballpark there, by the way. It's yeah. good, uh, good spot. Last time, uh, I think Major League Baseball had the All Star game. There was Tony Gwynn's and Cal Ripken's last All Star okay. game. Um, so, and I think Cal Ripken ended up hitting a home run that game, which is pretty awesome. Um, so exciting stuff. Exciting. That was like Ichiro's rookie year when he was with Seattle. Um, you know, a lot of exciting stuff. Philly sucked back then. So like, I don't <laughs> kind of want to remember that, but I love those teams as a kid. Um, I know yeah. you were like negative five years old. So yeah. Yeah. You know, you were just it's not even born yet. You be baby Earnshaw. Yeah. Oh, what year was it? What year was the last one? Did you say? 2001. Oh, okay. I was, so I wasn't even, no. Yeah. It wasn't even one yet. It was not even hmm. one yet. Cause it would have been before. Like I said, baby Earnshaw. Birthday. Cause I'm end of July. It's usually beginning of July. Oh, look at that. All right, Nick. Uh, I know you've done this to me the last couple of times, <laughs> and I have enjoyed it. But now it's my time. Uh, we're going to put together uh, a top five here. Um, last uh, couple of times, you've given me five random. Uh, you know, you give me a topic. You, I think last time you gave me Cy Young. Awards. I think it was Cy Young. Yeah, Cy Young. Yeah, and you gave me five guys, and I had to rank them. I didn't know. Uh, who the players were before you you did it, and I had to put them in order. And then afterwards, like, ah, I could have done better, but I didn't know. Man, that's cool. I like the idea. You're smart guys sometimes. So uh, I'm going to give you here. And what – I mean, I could not do this. I could not. I'm going to do leaders and on-base percentage, <laughs> more statistics that matter since I 2000. I like on-base. I like and I'm not going to use Barry Bonds here because that's way too easy. Actually, I could have because in some a certain way I could have given it to you last. (laughs) But no, Barry Bonds. I feel like that was too easy. So leaders and on base percentage 2000. This goes American League and National League. I'm leaving Barry Bonds out of it. Um, just to kind of you know whatever. Um, so first one, we're going to go with why, and I'm not going to give you the year or anything. I'm just going to give you the player. 
Um, and you're just going to rank them. Juan Soto. Juan Soto. I'm going to put him, I'm going to have him four. Okay. Juan Soto is going to be four for me. I'm going to write these down as we go. Okay. All right. Next. Chipper Jones. Oh. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I want to. No. I think I'm going to put him pretty high. I think I'm going to go two for Chipper Jones. Okay. So he's at four for Soto, two for Jones. Yeah. Two for Jones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Got Andrew McCutcheon, your boy. <laughs> I'm gonna. Mm, uh, I don't. Mm, I'm gonna. <coughs> this is tough. I know I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna put him three. Yeah, put him three. Okay. I'm gonna put Cutch three. <laughs> and now we go to Todd Helton. Oh, Todd Helton. Uh, he's gonna go five for me. Five. Okay. Yeah. Oh, who's the last one? Oh, who's gonna be number one? Who'd I save? Jason, Jason Giambi. Jason Giambi's my number one. Oh, I knew I should have put Chipper one, man. That's <laughs> no. I mean, I mean. So this is how you finish, right? Okay. You finish with Giambi in this order: Giambi, Chipper Jones, Kutch, Soto, and Helton. Yeah, that's my. Team. Now, that's obviously, I would have. Uh, no, nah, I can't even be an ass like that. I, I, <laughs> so, ha, all right. So if you had to redo that, what mm-hmm. would you, what order would you put that? Um, I'd go chipper one. Okay. Interesting. Cutch, cutch two. That's uh, crazy. Go ahead though. <laughs> go ahead. Mr. M- I love McCutcheon. Cutch two. Uh, I'll put, I'll put Helton three, Giambi four, Soto five. Say the last, I'm sorry. I was looking at something. What was the last three you said? Uh, so I said Chipper, Kutch. Hmm. I think I went. I'll go. I'll go. So this is my final one. I'll go. Helton, Giambi, Soto. Helton, Soto just Giambi, hasn't played. Soto, Soto hasn't That's played crazy. long enough. Easy. Soto just hasn't I, played but, long enough for me. I, I understand, but like, all right. So I'll give you the years, right? So like, and all I'll right. give you the on base percentage just for, for the heck of it. All right. So Todd Helton's was two thousand four sixty three mm-hmm. on base. Okay. Giambi two thousand one, the highest of them all. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I want to get into the Jambi disrespect. Uh, 2001, 477. He was a monster with those A's. Um, Chipper Jones, 2008, 470. Um, Juan Soto, 2021, 465. Okay. And then Kutch, the lowest of them all, of course, 410 <laughs> on base in 2014. Dude, people like forget. Like, I, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you mine real quick. Okay. Um, so I would probably go. Giambi. So you lead Giambi at one. I I go Giambi Soto just because Soto. I I and I'm projecting. See, I'm thinking, obviously, I'm see, it's I'm different, it, but that's what makes it fun. Yeah. That's what makes it fun though, because Soto's young and you're projecting yeah. his career. I think it's fun. Um, I go Giambi Soto just because of mm. I think the type of hitter is going to be okay. for the rest of his career. Giambi Soto, man, Giambi Soto. Jones because a Hall of Famer Helton, but he's going to be a Hall of Famer. I put Cutch yeah. last, um, but. Um, like Giambi, man, like people forget like those years with Oakland, even New York, like Good. 40 homers, bro. We yeah. might have talked about this on the show. I mean, back to back on, you know, I uh, had like a 476 on base percentage for Oakland in, in 2000. Mm. I think it was 20. Yeah. One MVP that year. Um, and then 477 and 01, 435 and 02, 412 and 03, 440 with New York in 2005 led, led the American league. Like, I mean, he was a walk machine. He was a power machine. He juiced like a mf um, <laughs> Who cares? Who wasn't juicing back then? Um, you know, shout out to shout out to Jason Giambi. He was a monster. I just wanted to. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed, man. I'm disappointed in you. But, <laughs> you want me putting Giambi back at one leave him like the original? Yeah. I, I mean, get I, it. I get I know. I, I get it. I, I get I'm it. Like, I See, like, I like the on base, but like. When I think of one on base guy, I want him yeah. towards the top of my lineup. And like I see yeah, what you're saying. Like, I'm just talking about player in division. I, I mean, I, I guess like this could also it was on the I, I mean, too. I only gave you I only gave you the on base percentage. Yeah. Um you know, statistic. You could go with the player yeah. of overall. So like that's your own criteria. I was just giving True. excuse me. 
you know, on base percentage. That's fun. I liked so. it. That was a good one, though. Good. Made glad. me think a little bit. That was a good one. Yeah. I think you got next week. I did two in a row. You got it two in a row. Yeah. You got yeah. We week. gotta we gotta bring back the all time franchises, this dude. I don't uh, miss it. Bring you don't miss it. Again. Sounds like ah, it seems like you don't miss it. We can bring them back eventually. Ah, I, I think this is going well. You gotta do two. You all right. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I gotta do two. <laughs> Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the all time. Why don't we let the like listeners let us know? Let the listeners, like, which one Facts. you like better? We could do a poll. We could do Ready? a poll. Turn around top five, turn around top five. Or, I like that name. Or, uh, or all time lists, all time lineups. We came up with a name for the segment. I think by the way, see how it just I, organically happens. Yeah, yeah. The turnaround top five. Yeah. The top five <laughs> and five with Jack Fritz. <laughs> Shout out Jack. Shout out to Jack, uh, who's also a baseball nerd, a Phillies nerd. So shout out to Jack. Um, so I think that's just going to about do it for today's show. A lot of exciting stuff uh, today. You know, the Mets suck right now, which is great. Ellie De La Cruz <laughs> is incredible. At least Luis Arias, um, incredible. Futures game. Uh, exciting stuff there at T-Mobile Park in Seattle with all of the young uh, crop of players. That's going to be exciting. We'll be back. Uh, Nick, by, I, by the way, I, didn't, I feel like this is an ass. I, I didn't ask about it before we leave. I didn't ask about your vacation. How was oh, it? It was good, man. I, as you can see, I'm a little tanner than, than last time. I have a <laughs> little bit more of a glow. A little bit more of a glow. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more, you know. <laughs> you still look white. You still look white I as know. ever. I, I, got, I did get a little tan. I didn't get burnt, though. That was a good thing. As long as I didn't get sunburnt, we were all good. I tanned, sunburnt out of the question but yeah it was a great time great weather great food uh you know did some fun stuff fishing was out on the water kayaking and stuff so it was a great time are sharks a fish <laughs> sharks are not a fish yes they are don't sharks jolly me sharks are not a fish right yes no, they what is it oh, oh they are a fish. Oh, oh, i'm about oh, to tell whale. mike angelina whales are yeah whales Ooh. are not a fish i'm tired man i've been up since like six in the morning now i'm just kidding with you Sharks heck, are a fish. You sound like me. Yeah, sharks are a fish. Sharks are a fish. I don't know, man. I got the sound bite now. I'm at the side of the mic. You do. Yeah, you he's do. gonna he's gonna he's gonna use that. It sharks works. Sharks are a fish. Sharks are a fish. Sharks are a fish. Shout out to Immaculate Grid. They, got fins. they do. But uh, oh so did you do any well, what else did you do? You were you were down I know you were down there with your family, with your girlfriend. Yeah. Um anything, anything, any highlights, like super big highlights down there? Uh, not big highlights. I mean, went kayaking for the first time. So that was, that is, I guess, the biggest highlight. That's that exciting. was fun. Yeah, that was fun. We were out and like, went out into the um, mangroves and we're kayaking through the mangroves. That's a mangrove. It's like, so it's like, a, is it a place? Kind of like a, it's kind of like a forest in water. It's cr- It's a little weird. It's hard to explain. Ooh, I guess. That sounds, that sounds um, intimidating. Yeah, that yeah, was cool. Uh... That's pretty cool. Mangrove yeah. trees. Ooh, that is pretty cool. I can see I can see yeah. those down there in Florida. Yeah. That's cool. Ooh, that's scary. Look Didn't that. fall in. Didn't fall in or anything. I found a starfish. I found Patrick Star. Ah, did you? Yeah. That was pretty did cool. Did you did it eat you? No, it didn't eat me. Um but okay. I didn't eat it either. I, I ate some fish though. I did I eat a lot of fish down there. Ate a lot of sharks, huh? Not a lot of sharks. Not not big on the shark meat, but grouper uh snapper yeah oh, crabs crab cake that was good i had some crab, crab cake cake's there. delicious i'm a big crab cake guy <laughs> big hell yeah i'm glad you had a good time down there man it was good man it was good yeah also shout out to uh, lsu in florida i haven't even checked the score of the game it's a good thing we, we should uh mention um nine to two lsu it looks like they had that wrapped up um lsu getting revenge on florida Possibly. It's top of the fourth. Who knows what can happen? I mean, Florida can come back and score 24 runs again. Um, so a lot of, you know, young, exciting players from there. I'm not a big college baseball guy, Nick, but, you know, you got your Wyatt Lang- Langfords of the world in Florida, Paul Skeens, um, Dylan Cruz. Uh, so exciting stuff there in the College World Series. Hoping Florida comes back a little bit just to, uh, you know, just to give us a good, good, good final. You know, I know I'm going to go watch. Um, so. Nick, uh, you know, make sure you follow us on all these social media platforms. Um, we're definitely going to de- debate some Larissa Sarayas in a couple of weeks, but fun debates, fun debates, um, exciting stuff. We'll be back soon. Nick Earnshaw, take us out. Nick Earnshaw, take us out.
You have been listening to The Shift, Francisco Rojas, Nick Earnshaw. Follow us on Instagram at The Shift underscore media. Follow Francisco on Twitter, Ro, at Rojas underscore media underscore. Follow me on Twitter, Nern underscore nine. And follow us on TikTok, the, the underscore shift underscore. See you next time. Goodbye.